It's a northern hairy wood ant. How on earth do you keep track of a single ant in a landscape like this? Two words. Tiny radios. But here at Longshore, they're not just tracking one ant. Over the last 13 years, they've tracked over 20,000 individual ants. And what they've discovered is absolutely incredible. I'm Rosie Holsworth. I'm a ranger with the National Trust and I'm also a massive nature nerd. Come and have a look at this. A wood ant nest. The northern hairy wood ant, Formica lugubris, is one of the UK's largest species of ant. Wood ant nests might just look like a pile of sticks, but they're really, really complex structures with many different tunnels and chambers. They've even got a graveyard in there. I'm not just wandering aimlessly in the woods. I am looking for a ranger, and there's a man in red sitting on a log. It must be Chris the Hi, ranger. ranger. Hello. Oh, you're right. Yeah, not yeah, bad. We're here to talk about wood ants. How do you track an ant? How do you track an ant? Yeah, um, a, a, a tricky one. Well. Sam, who, who did the, uh, the study to begin with, he was um, sticking little electronic chips to the back of an ant, but like a barcode, and he had a barcode reader, so as the ant walked past on a little trail... He just bleep them. He could bleep it. He would tell him <laughs> what number that ant was, and, and he could uh, jot down what it was doing, whether it was carrying food or prey or what have you. Does that not harm the ants? Uh, no, they're, they're very, very resilient, very tough. Only applied by trained yes. ant riders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam, Sam um, perfected the technique. I'm pleased yeah. to hear that. Fantastic. Should we go and have a look at some ant yeah. in the wild? Yeah, we're going to find an ant colony. Nice, let's go. An ant's brain has about the same processing power as the computer that launched the first Apollo space missions. An ant queen can live somewhere between 15 and 20 years, which is amazing. I can see some ant hills. Yes, we're looking for mound shapes on the ground, and yeah, we've, we've seen two or three, haven't we, here? Big one there, smaller one there, and then in between, um, if you can pick it out, there's a little trail, oh, isn't there? there a trackway, is, yeah. a motorway yeah. for the ants, where they're um, moving between the nests. Wow. Carrying all sorts of things. And if we follow that trail, yeah. it leads us to... Follow it along, it will eventually probably take us to a tree. A massive tree! Yep. Yeah. And if we look closely, we can see the ants going up and down the tree. Oh yeah, there they are. And if you look really, really closely, you might see that the ants coming down have got slightly bigger abdomens, back ends. A bigger booty. Yep, yeah, than the ants that are going up the tree. So they do, yeah. Yeah, yeah, why is that? That's because they're, they're feeding off the aphids that are, that are up in the, the very top of the tree canopy. An aphid is a very tiny insect, a, a green fly. Gardeners call them green flies, don't they? They, they eat all their plants. So they're up in the top of the tree um, and they've, they've tapped into the sap of the tree, the sugary, um, sugary watery liquid that, that the tree uses. But they can't process all that liquid, so they, they secrete some of it um, again as a sugary liquid, and it's called honeydew. And the ants go up to the aphids, tap them on the back, and they drink that honeydew. And that's why they get fatter. Amazing, and, and they're the bringing back it back down the tree, where are yeah, they taking it Yeah, follow it back down, follow the trails again, and they're going back to the nest. And when they get back to the nest, they will sick that sugary liquid up into their, into their friends' mouths and, oh, wow. and help to feed them. And they're doing a lot of sharing, sharing food, sharing the, their eggs between nests, and it just makes them more resilient. Amazing. So sharing really is caring when you're an ant and cooperation is key. Maybe there's something that we can learn from the <laughs> ants. Thank you very much, Chris, no for showing us around. Next up, I'm off to the University of York to meet biologist and ant lover Elva, who's going to tell us a bit more about this incredible research project. And I'm hoping she's in this lab here. It. Are you Professor Elva? I am. Hello. Hello, lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you too. You've got your microscope out. Are you looking at ants? So this is a northern hairy wood ant, one of the ants that I study. Whoa, that's like a terrifying little alien and it definitely has got a hairy face. 
Most ants will cooperate with other ants within their nest, but they're usually not very friendly to ants that are in other nests. But the thing that's really interesting about the northern hairy wood ants at the Longshore Estate and a few other places is that they have cooperative interactions with ants from other nests. So they actually share food with ants from other nests nearby. Wow. And that's quite unusual. And the way the Longshore Estate is managed with being a woodland pasture means we can really easily see what's going on, see those interactions between ants from neighbouring nests and see that they cooperate. And because it's been a long-term study in partnership with the National Trust, we've been able to revisit the same nests and even the same trails um, over a decade. So El I can tell just by being in your office that you are really, really into ants. What, what is it about them that particularly kind of draws you in? So I just find it fascinating the way they cooperate and particularly the way that each individual ant only knows a little bit about what's around it and how it's interacted with the other ants. But from that local knowledge and the interactions, you can get this huge combination of behaviours that make something that works at the group level. And from your knowledge of ants and your clear passion for them, what can we, what can we learn from ants? What should humans be doing better? So, Ants are incredibly cooperative, not just within their group, but also with other groups. And I think that's something as humans that we could uh, definitely learn from. So yeah, that collective collective action and each person playing a kind of small part and cooperating is, that's the message that we need to take home. Thank you very much. For more amazing wildlife facts and behind the scenes action from the National Trust, hit the subscribe button. So from me, Rosie, and on behalf of all our fabulous little creatures, thanks for watching. See you next time.